She talks to the people all night long, chatting and a gabbing and a singing her song. All the divas down on Rainbow Street love to hear Tony go tweet, 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 talking Tony. Talk, talk, talking Tony. Oh, talking Tony gonna really gonna talk tonight. Hello, welcome to Talking Tony on the Rudy Radio Network, powered by Strong Island Entertainment. I'm Tony Holmperm, and I have two very special guests with me tonight, two very good friends. We have Danny Higgins and Bob Higgins. Bob the dad, Danny the son. <laughs> yes. And they are, um, Danny, you are the creative director yes. of East Line Theater. Artistic director. Art, I'm sorry, artistic director. And Bob, you are the president of the board of East Line Theater. That is correct. Now, um, Danny, I would assume that East Line Theater initially you was was born out of out of your desire. Yes, it was, and, and, and it was well. It was not just my desire, but we've been where we are right now for about eight years. Mm -hmm. So it was a group of people who came together, who wanted to uh, do work that we felt was not being ignored by other theaters on Long Island. Mm -hmm. um, so it was the more avant-garde, the more uh, lesser-known plays, things mm -hmm. of that nature. Um, and since then, we've uh, we've grown. And now, as of uh, two and a half years ago, we've been a nonprofit, mm -hmm. and uh, we've expanded and uh, brought changes, and our programming has changed. And yes, you know, now and East Line is located in Wontaw. That's correct. Uh, on Wontaw Ave. Yes, and it it is a uh, a, a lovely little theater. Yes, I, I'm <laughs> she's happy to say she's that. small but she's fierce. She's, she's indeed. <laughs> she she is she is tiny but mighty. Yes, yes I, I, I like that better. Yeah, I would say that she we, is yeah. she is tiny but mighty, and I, everyone that I know on Long Island that knows and is involved in theater. Yeah. I mean, they only have the highest of praise for the productions that go on at, yes. at East oh, Line. That's, that's very nice of them. Very, very <laughs> nice to hear. Well, yeah, yes. we like to call it a uh, where big theater happens in a small space. At I least that's that. what I like to call it. I know? love that. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I have big things that happen in, in a small space. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yes. In I've heard that on the streets, too. <laughs> but only in the theater circles. Only in the theater circles, <laughs> yes. Yes. So, Danny... Let's go back. What was, the, what, you know, inspired you? What, you know, gave you this love of theater? Um, well, actually, it started all the way back when I was a, a little kid. Mm -hmm. um, what was I? I was like seven, I think, when I took my first singing lesson. Um, if that. Yeah. If that. Yeah, it was something yeah, I was you really were, You little. were little. Yeah. You were a tyke. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, it started there. And actually, the first time I was ever on stage, I was seven years old, and I got incredible stage fright in the middle of the song, oh, and no. I put the mic what down. What was the song? It was like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. It oh. was a Christmas song. It was at a music school. I don't, do you want me to mention the music school? Of it's, course. It was at the Lindbrook, the Lindbrook School of Music. With Miss Charlene. School, with Miss Charlene, Charlene. Bolt, who's still there. <laughs> yeah. And does she his, still it, remember you, Danny? Yes, yeah, she does. Oh, I, actually saw her, I saw her about a month ago. Oh. Yeah. And uh, he came out on stage. And he was out for his solo. It was a Christmas song. He looked out at the audience and said, no. Oh. And put down the mic and, on and the walked stage, stage and walked off stage. <laughs> oh, And oh that my. was his stage and since debut. Then, <laughs> and since then, I've been on stage. What, he, got, he got right back on the horse. Once came a out, prima donna, always, always a prima donna. <laughs> you know me too well, Tony. <laughs> he, uh, so it, it started then, and then it mm -hmm. sort of steamrolled mm -hmm. through high school. Mm -hmm. um, I went to Holy Trinity High School, so mm -hmm. which has a... a, a Beautiful drama department, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, run by right now by Catherine Murphy, uh, Murphy, who does absolute wonders with the kids there, and the, uh, she really helped uh, create an environment that I felt fostered theater mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. through dance and through acting and through other old fun kind of things. Mm -hmm. But uh, since then, um, that's when I finally met up with uh, some of the original uh, people involved at East Line, and we realized that uh, we wanted to take what we loved about theater to the next step and do it right. ourselves. Right, um, and that's sort of how East Line came to be. Right. And now, Bob, you, correct me if I'm wrong, you did not have a theatrical background. No. What I'm was about your as far background? Away from theater as you, you can get. You mind My telling background everyone. primarily is as a New York City firefighter. Okay. Um, it's my family's background. In fact, mm -hmm. my father, most of my brothers, my other brother who wasn't a firefighter was a New York City police officer. Mm -hmm. And I was a firefighter. And that's the world I came from. We mm -hmm. came from a you know, working class town here in Long Island in Freeport. Mm -hmm. 
and um, loved theater. We all sang. We all did things. I did some little bitty things in school like the other school kids, but I never had any uh, emotion toward theater. never had any mm-hmm. interest in being anything more than a fan of theater mm-hmm. uh, until uh, Daniel... I was always, in fact, even after Dan got very into theater, dance mm-hmm. and theater from a very young age, I was a big fan of my son, and mm-hmm. I became even a bigger fan of theater. Mm-hmm. Um, but it wasn't until I got this involved that I became what I feel is a part of theater now. So, yeah, it's been a huge transition for me. I'll a bet. wonderful transition, a positive transition, oh, that, but a challenging great. one as well. That's great. Because typically you would think, you know, a, you know, Someone coming from a, a background of family that's, you know, New York firefighter, New yeah. York poli- city police yeah. officers, that somebody in the family wanting to be in theater, yeah. is, it's, sort, it's sort of like, what? Well, he, 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 <laughs> under, he yeah. undersells the theatricality of the Higgins family. Okay. If, you, if, you ever, okay. if you'd ever been to a Higgins family party, okay. <laughs> there is not, they're, they're sharing the center of the stage, singing, dancing the whole night. Okay, so, the truth yeah. comes out. Yeah. yeah. The yeah, truth we, always comes out, Bob. Fair enough. We are a bit <laughs> theatrical, I'll admit that. <laughs> yes. And I suppose mm. every one of us has performed for sellout crowds in front of every mirror in every one of our homes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, and we all sing in the shower. And even as kids, uh, my uh, my brothers and I had a little a cappella thing we used to do mm-hmm. in the school, and they still do it, and we still do. Um, although I don't think our harmonies are as good as we were when we were younger. You know? Oh wow! But uh, sure yeah, the, still good. it was not a that big of a leap, mm-hmm. and um, so yeah, uh, exactly. I wasn't as far away as it sounds. Okay, uh, nor well, are most good. people like that. Uh, there's mm-hmm. a lot of the, there's a lot of fun and games in theater among folks that I grew up with like that. So mm-hmm. it's, it wasn't a shock Okay. when I uh, have a son who was basically came out of the womb with jazz hands uh, and <laughs> that I could Same. Not, that I could not <laughs> wait until he asked me to get involved. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, oh, that's terrific. That's yeah, terrific. Yeah. That's, so, that's so nice when you hear about families that, that support you yeah. know, each other yeah. like that. I oh. mean... Because, I, I uh, but there's anyway. far too many. There's far too many that don't, or not even that they don't support. But there, there, you know, a lot of fathers might have like said, "Well, it's great that you love theater, but you you, you need something to fall back on." You need, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't mind telling on myself here. I mm-hmm. at first tolerated dance theater because mm-hmm. I th- just assumed, okay, you need to get this out of your system and have mm. a serious career. Okay, and then one day. Uh, he was still in high school, and mm-hmm. when he told me in no uncertain terms, this is my life. Mm-hmm. You can either get behind me and support me right. or get out of my way, but this is my life. Mm-hmm. And at that point, I was like, fair enough. I need to get behind you. Good. Was, yeah. Yeah. That's it. And, and everyone here on Long Island is very lucky that you did. Yes. Because, I guess so. Because, you know, out of that, you know. Was born East, East Line, Line Theater. You know, it's 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 a it's a it's a you know a winding road, but mm-hmm. it gets to East Line eventually. Ab- absolutely. And also, I do think that the the principles that that my father taught me when I was a kid about family is family also mm. kind of uh, kind of exists inside the theater as well. We mm. very much are family at East Line, and mm-hmm. we also consider you a part of oh, it. Oh, thank Indeed. you, thank you. Yeah, he did. Indeed. Um, and uh, all the people that walk through the the door and 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 lend us their talents uh, mm. are all a part of our family. Yes, in and, some way, and it's it, it, and it's a great family, you know, like with um, uh, your partner Susan, who is yes. the vice president. Yes, of she's the our board. vice president on the board. Probably, and and <laughs> I've been vice president of board. Let me tell you, vice president is a lot of work. Yeah, uh, and 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 not and not as yeah. as much, you know, uh, uh, praise or, uh, or or credit for the mm-hmm. for the for the work that you do. Yeah. So, but we do have to, we do have to credit Susan. She shout out to Susan. Shout Indeed, out to, um, to Susan. I would say in terms of the business end of it, mm-hmm. she is far more the president than the vice president. <laughs> um, I uh, I do a lot of the hands on work at mm-hmm. the building and at the theater itself, and mm-hmm. in support of Dan, I am a board member, of course, as the president of the board. Um, but Susan is behind the scenes is doing a tremendous amount of work mm-hmm. that I just don't have the skill set for. So yeah, that she so. does for us, yeah. Yes. Well, I, well, I know when you know mm-hmm. I've I've helped you out with some different fundraisers. Yes. Susan, yes. Is, Susan is there, and she is hands on and yeah. and running around back to front, back to front. Yeah. So yeah, you know, which you know, uh, uh, I've been on boards, and you know, I, mm-hmm. I I know what it's I know what it's like. Yeah. yeah. So it's a, it's a lot of work. Mm-hmm. But now, what exa- How does this affect the dynamic of father and son? 
that mm. you have the, you know, this whole business relationship too. Now we were talking before we went on air about how uh, artistic director and president of the board are usually, usually, you know, at odds, mm. you know, over, you know, some issue or, or other. Well, it depends. It depends on the issue. Uh, yeah, get closer. But uh, <laughs> no, it depends on the issue. I would say, but mm. um, I do think that, you know, well, me, me and my father very much do share a temper. Uh, the Higgins family <laughs> temper, um, but eventually we do eventually come around to either one of us mm -hmm. saying, you know what, you're right, but that's but most good things happen that way. Of course. And the one thing course. I will say is that, um, and Susan is included in, the, in this, and everyone involved in the theater is included in this. Mm -hmm. When any kind of disagreement happens, we all know that we're there for the same reason. Mm -hmm. We're there to support the theater and make right. sure that the theater goes on and, and, and experiences new right. things and brings in new people. Um, and eventually we all sort of come to a, 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 an agreement on what to do and how to move forward. And once we leave that room and that's that, we're all committed to what we have to do. You mm -hmm. know, so... I don't think I think yes, it's it's changed the dynamic. Obviously, mm -hmm. I I've actually gotten to know my father a lot more by mm -hmm. doing this, um, a lot more, and uh, I actually think it's been for the better personally. But that's just me. That's that's great. And what do you, what do you say about it, Bob? Um, I got I, I mean, Dan has said a lot, and I can't disagree with any of it. In fact, I agree with him wholeheartedly. It has changed me as a man, as a father, mm -hmm. um, in, and I would say all positive ways. Even mm -hmm. uh, some of the times where we yeah we've had to butt heads. I'm the president of the board. There are issues that the board needs to be in on top of that sometimes I think the artistic side of, the, of, of it is mm -hmm. pushing against. And mm -hmm. they have to. The right. artistic end has to push against that. Right. They need to push for their vision. Right. And I'm, my job is to provide the art side with the resources. Mm -hmm. And if I think the resources are getting stretched, I right. might want to try to push back. Right. I'm not always right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I need to yield. Mm -hmm. Dan knows me. I have a tough time yielding. <laughs> yes, I, uh, I've been told more than once that I'm a bit over aggressive, uh -huh. and so I have to, you know, learn to temper that. And at the same time, that's a lot of times that's where Susan comes in. She's the grown up in the room. Okay, um, who's able to better articulate to Dan or to the art side what we and Dan and sometimes the rest of the his staff is able to articulate to the president through the vice president about what we want to do. But at the end of the day, what I'm real, I'd like to underscore is uh, Dan, uh, who had said before about, th about family. Mm -hmm. Families, good families, solid families, mm -hmm. can disagree, can oh, bang yes. heads. Yes. In fact, one of the best pieces of advice I ever got to the secret of a good marriage was this. Learn how to fight. Mm -hmm. It's easy to love. Learn how to fight. Right. Because there's a skill to that. That's very true. There's a skill to that. Mm -hmm. And I think, although Dan and I have had some doozies, mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of that is driven by father-son stuff, mm -hmm. um, which happens in just about all father-son, mother-daughter relationships. Yes. Um, at the end of the day, there's absolutely no way. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to try to do my best to support his vision. And he's in no way is going to do anything that is going to be detrimental to the long-term business end of the theater. He mm -hmm. knows it as well as I do. It's mm -hmm. a balance. And sometimes we disagree. And we usually, <laughs> at the end of the day, find the right thing to do. And, mm -hmm. we, and we, we move on. And it's been growing. Dan says he got to know me. I've got to know my son. And I see a, a, a wonderful, artistic, grown young man mm -hmm. coming into his own who's not afraid to look his father in the eye and say, Dad, I disagree. Mm -hmm. Wow. I think I did something right, maybe, as, oh, absolutely. as a father. Absolutely. You know, that's, that, that's a wonderful thing. And Danny, what, what actually was your, your vision for Eastline? Because Eastline is, is not your... your Typical no, it is not. theater. No, it's not. Um, which is a, which is a great thing, well, in my opinion. Well, one of the things about that is so true about the space we're in is that uh, we have this um, this sort of um, commitment to intimacy. I like to say mm -hmm. that uh, we want to stay a certain size, so that way the uh, the action is is um, so close to you that like you can feel like you're a part mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the things that I think is most vibrant about the space that mm -hmm. we're in. Um, and I would say that the vision. Um, is more along those lines in the sense that we want to do work um, in ways that uh, speak true to our audiences, but with our audience's participation as well. Mm -hmm. You know, we want them to feel like when they come to the theater, our theater in particular, that uh, it is more than just sitting in a chair and, mm -hmm. and, and having popcorn or whatever it is and, and, and watching a, pu a bunch of people dance across the stage. Like, you're coming to the theater to experience something, to feel something, to be moved, mm -hmm. um, and to feel like you were a part of that experience. Mm -hmm. Theater, um, at its essence, is a, is a dialogue, mm -hmm. uh, not just on stage, but between an mm -hmm. actor and an audience 
silence. But the thing that's most powerful about that is that that dialogue is usually silent. No, very often in most cases, the audience does not ever respond to what an actor would give them. Right. So it is this silent dialogue between both that feed off of each other. Mm -hmm. And at Eastline, we think it is mostly pal is most palpable because of how small we are. Yeah. Right. And exactly. that is really very much the vision of Eastline mm -hmm. is to sort of um, mind that and to uh, allow it to sort of prosper and grow and change and alter. Mm -hmm. um, as well as also doing the fun stuff too, like mm. uh, drag bingo for of an course. example, to yes. just throw that in there. Yes. Uh, to do the more, um, uh, I would say, uh, we, well, we, uh, we joke at, uh, at Eastline, we call it Eastline After Dark. Eastline After uh, Dark. You know, to do, the, to do the fun things. <laughs> yes. but, but also I think what I love about um, our extracurricular activities is that they, uh, they really very much are a celebration of our differences as people, mm -hmm. you know? Mm. Um, that we do drag bingo, mm -hmm. you know, that we do gender bender cabarets, mm -hmm. uh, that we do very much consider ourselves a safe space. Yes. for all types of people, no matter what they are. Yes. Fun, fun fact, mm -hmm. um, the, the drag bingo, the, mm -hmm. the very first one that I did at yeah. this line, was the very first time I ever actually did drag bingo. No, I yeah, did no not way. know yeah, that. Yeah, well, wow, now we're really You could have fooled yes. me. Yes. <laughs> no, you're being, you're being of... kind. Well, yeah. uh, you know, I was assisting mother. Uh, fair enough. I was, I, was, I was assisting mother. That was the first time that, that you... was a, Yeah. That, I that did was, not know that. That was one of the very... Like one of the very first times I was even doing drag. Really? Yeah. I didn't know so, that. And I was like, I was like quite intimidated, but but mother was, that was mother your was first like time. Pushed was like the the mother bird pushing me out of there. She was like, go go, go walk around, go talk to people. You were great. So, I don't know. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Thank Seriously, you. Seriously, I I did not know. I w I did not notice. Oh right. yes. Oh yes. I was like I was. I thought like, you were a natural. Oh please, far from it. Oh, far well. from I'd it. I'd like to, far if you don't mind it. me jumping in here, yes, because it's it's important that I mention our. Our third board member, who you just alluded to, yes, uh, Mother Anita Moorhead, Anita Moorhead, our Long Island legendary drag queen, is our other board member. Yes, that's right. Uh, she sits on our board, and she has been a vital part of our mm -hmm. growth and introduced us to mm -hmm. this idea of a part of, of, of our important um, move toward inclusivity right. and diversity. I mean, we already were there, and to start with, that's, the, that's right. Dan's vision. And mother was a big part of another step toward that. And yes. drag bingo was a big part of that. Yes. Um, it's not just about the theatricality of it either. Yes. It's all, and, and, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know, it's also about what it represents, mm -hmm. especially where we are and what Dan and I like to say Dan because nobody pays tickets to see the president of the board. No. They, they pay tickets to see Dan's work. Um, but what Dan is bringing to the mm -hmm. community here, um, and, and the the selection of of, of plays that you you've done at Eastline yeah. are are very different from anything that you would see at a lot of the other theaters like, you know, creative well, ministries I, I, well, or, yes. well, or well, well, Wentworth Theater. Well, CM or, does, does absolutely spectacular work. Yes, I mean, ab they're, they're, absolutely. I actually just heard the ghost that just closed the, uh, or is it closing this weekend? I don't know. Well, mm -hmm. shout out to CM for that. Yes. Uh, but they, Definitely. they do absolutely stellar work. Mm -hmm. But um, again, I, it all goes back to the intimacy thing. Yes. CM is an, is a, is a proscenium house yes. with a lot mm -hmm. of seats. Yes. We're, we're a 40, 50 seat house, you know? Right. So, we very much try to choose the plays that fit mm -hmm. because we have to because right. we don't have that much space. Yes. Right. But also, um, beyond you, that, you would not do West Side Story. At, no. At we it would, would be like West Side. Yes. <laughs> there'd be no, there'd be no room for the story. Well, I wouldn't mind jumping in. And again, I tend to stay away from the autistic side. Mm -hmm. um, but if we were doing West Side Story, there is an East Line, not there is, but there mm. would be an East Line version of West Side. Yes. Okay. Dan has a way of, okay. uh, of minimalizing and, 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 and reducing to its essence in order to bring that type of theater to that intimate space mm -hmm. and in a way transform it to something else mm -hmm. as opposed to some big um, over-the-top over the top well, overproduced thing to something more intimate. I mean, I'll let Dan talk about this when he, uh, we've, we had what was... Um, Prospero, uh, how many Prospero folks? Live, yeah. We had a, we had a. It was a nine piece orchestra. Which, we had a nine piece orchestra, which I like always kick myself that I I did not get to see that. Yeah. Um, because um, I've I've heard from so many people like that raved about. Yeah, Prospero. well, it was me and um, my writing partner John Brodigan's first work together. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually doing a, a small children's show right now at Eastline Sleepy Hollow, which is a fun time. Oh, but I love yeah, Sleepy for Hollow. in time for the spooky holidays. Mm -hmm. uh, 
but um, either way, but it, uh, it it was it was a it was what what a ride. I mean, Saturday just, one p.m. Uh, yeah, Saturday one p.m. Sleepy Hollow. But what a ride for Prosper Alive, You know, to write something from scratch mm-hmm. and to then present it, and then to have the community uh, not only enjoy it but celebrate it with us mm-hmm. and, to, and to to love it so much. You know, you know, I I keep running into people who say the same thing. They're like, oh, I mm-hmm. wish I got to see it. So, if John Broadenham, if you're listening. Because maybe you, you need maybe you need yeah. to do it Another, do it again. So I want to do it again. I can see. Yeah. But I, I mean, I I heard people say to me that it was like you know something you would see you know off Broadway. Yeah, that's how, you know that's yeah. how good it was. Well, I, I I do think that Eastline does take a lot of um, inspiration from off Broadway houses. Mm-hmm. Um, my uh, associate artistic director uh, Nicole Savin is an avid theater goer, mm-hmm. and she is very much. T- and I go with her often. I mean, that's part of the job is that you have to go right. out and see work. Got to right. see theater. You have to see of theater. Course. You have to read theater. Yeah. You have to be a part of theater. You know, mm-hmm. theater is a many is 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 has got a large scope. Yes. Um. And uh, you know, the houses that I find myself mostly, um, like at the edge of my seat, are the smallest ones doing the, the most daring, thought pushing, you know, mm-hmm. work. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, um, but but. Prospero Live was very much, I felt at East Line in our current location, uh, was very much sort of that, our, that kind of, it came from that mm-hmm. sort of going to the, into the down, downtown uh, Manhattan and seeing those works and sitting there and going, you know, I, I could, because it was just an idea in my head, I right. can do that at mm-hmm. East Line. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. there's no reason I can't. If they can do this here, right. then I can do that there. Yes. And that's where it kind of sort of germinated from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We mm-hmm. just, Dan has just found a wonderful way to respect the space mm-hmm. and not get too over the top with it. Um, it's obvious some works just wouldn't work in a small space unless they were changed in some right. way and, and reduced down. Not reduced down in effect or reduced down in words, but just mm-hmm. reduced... In in, in 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 size, but uh, I don't. But not in uh, art. In art, mm-hmm. it's still extremely. It's a, just a different place. We liked. I like to use. I, I steal a term from uh, Spike Lee. It was a term when we were, kids were growing up in Freeport. The word "the joint" it just mm-hmm. meant something really awesome. Or, 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 that's awesome. And so I like to call it an East Line joint. You know, it's like it's like. It's Ooh, East like Line. That. What yeah. we do is East Line. East line. Like how East does, Line Gothic. How would, oh, oh, yeah, Nicole Saban uh, gave us East Line Gothic. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Nicole, mm-hmm. wonderful, uh, one of our staff, our artistic, associate artistic director, who brings a wonderful education and experience with, with theater from well, London. Well, it's interesting what Nicole says, and I think what really gets mm-hmm. true to what, what, what Bob is saying is that, um, um, is that uh, we have to always, our job as, as theater artists is to always serve the text, is mm-hmm. to convey what the writer is trying to convey and mm-hmm. what is the best way of doing that. And mm-hmm. we at Eastline find that the best way to do that is to not get in its way, mm-hmm. is to present the text as it is, you know, mm. l- allowing artists, uh, actors in specific, uh, specifically to come in and bring their own humanity to it and allow the text to sort of just mm-hmm. speak for itself. So do, well, do so you yeah. find that w- when you're having to do something and, and sort of like st- you know, sort of strip it down like oh, I, I almost would like uh, equate it to like when you take a a, a song and you know you're mm-hmm. stripping it down to like like an acoustical. Yeah, version. that's a great way of putting Does, it. Are you like really analogy sort of works. stripping? Analogy works. Analogy, yes. Yeah, it I'm works. making it an al- an analogy yeah. <laughs> that you're sort of getting to the ver- like the core of of the heart of the story. I would say so. Yes, I, I think. It's roots, I mm-hmm. think, is what you're, you're looking for there. It's, it's, and that's what I mean by serving the text, is mm-hmm. that we get to it mm-hmm. and that we allow it to, to come forward. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know? We don't try to hide it behind other things. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't try to glossy it up or make it uh, you know, extravagant. You know? Mm-hmm. While we may, in our own way, be extravagant, you know? it's mm-hmm. not that our, we not, we're certainly theatrical, mm-hmm. we're a theater, but um, we very much want the audience to come in and really be able to sort of be given the meat at the right. first beginning. There's right. no sauce, mm-hmm. there's no sides. Right. Like here is the core of what we're trying to say yes. mm-hmm. right from the very beginning. Now, now let me ask, because East Line is a very, well, we're, we're going to say it's an intimate theater. Intimate is the good intimate. word. Intimate. Is uh, the good word. Being an intimate theater, have you ever had anything happen sort of unexpectedly? Oh, I got some good ones. That, you know, because <laughs> I got some good ones. It's, it's such a small space. and mm-hmm. I got some good ones. What's I actually, one of the funniest things that, um, ever, that ever happened? Oh, well, I don't want to embarrass anybody, you know, so okay. I have to, I don't want to name names. You don't will to be name trained names. to protect the not so innocent. You yes, exactly. Name names. We just, <laughs> just want to know what happened. Well, I mean, the <laughs> thing is you can't get away with much in a small theater. Right. Um, and one of the first shows that Eastline did way back when uh, there was an actor who did not know his lines. Oh. And in the scene, 
<laughs> it took pl- oh. sorry. It took place at a Chinese food restaurant, mm-hmm. and he had a menu, mm-hmm. and in the menu was his script. Was his script. But now he didn't put just the one scene in the menu. He put the entire script in the menu. Oh boy! And that's a lot. When he didn't realize at first that he was doing this, and then during the performance, we started to recognize that he was. That was a very long Chinese food menu. <laughs> oh boy! And it was like the Cheesecake Factory. It just never ends, <laughs> you know. And and um, during the scene, I, mm. I swear to you. He must have just hit the menu wrong, and onto the stage went a hundred pieces of paper. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> All over the stage, oh, the audience no. gasped. You know, not that he was fooling anyone, right? But the audience was like, "Oh God!" You know, yeah. Now we can't. Now we can't hide it. You know. Yes. And he was lost. He had no idea what his line was. He was oh, like, ah, "Blah blah blah." And the other actor in in the scene looked towards me because I was running the tech. Mm-hmm. Looked towards me and just went, "Check, please." And then the <laughs> lights came down. So I would say that is probably my favorite moment. Oh, yeah. man, that is so funny. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Oh, my God. I mean, there was about 15, the, the show was 15 minutes shorter that night. But oh, boy. What are you going to do? You can't move on. You know? Well, I, I, I always say that's that's the beauty of live entertainment. I would say so. You, you never know what's what's going to happen. Well, he wasn't. Um, it had to be the, the the second show that. that I think it was our first. No, it was our second show. It was on Golden Pond. Okay. And okay. there, in okay. *On Golden Pond*, one of the one of the jokes in the show is that the door keeps falling off; it hinges. Mm-hmm. So the show is running, mm-hmm. um, and my dad's backstage, and he's wearing all black. Just so happens. Just so happens, wearing all black, and mm-hmm. I didn't wear all black, and the change had to happen with the door, mm-hmm. where he has to you have to set the door so it will fall off its hinges. Okay. And it has to happen in like three seconds. Mm-hmm. You know, in a blackout, you don't, right. can't see anything. Right. And I looked at him and I said, "Okay, you're doing the door." He goes, "What?" <laughs> and I said, "You're doing the door." Uh, and he was like, uh, "Are you sure? You're doing the door." <laughs> and he went on stage. <laughs> He put the door in, did it beautifully, uh-huh. panicking all the way, uh-huh. came out, looked at me and said, if you make me do that again, I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, going back to what my background. It wasn't that, like you were having to do a, a monologue. Hit, you are just doing the door. A monologue, forget it. I wouldn't have been able to do it. <laughs> I uh, was weaned on firefighting, right? I mean, mm. I was crawling into burning buildings for a living. Mm-hmm. Ask me to go out on stage again <laughs> with only 20 <laughs> seconds to make that kind of a change? <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah, so that's... That's so, stress. So if That's pressure. So if, it, if it's a choice between, <laughs> well, Bob, you, you need to go on stage and 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 uh, read this part, or we have this burning building that we need you yeah. to run into. I'll take the latter. That's why I'm a backstage. Bob's, Bob guy. is like Alex. A I'll take burning guy. buildings for, for two hundred. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things I'd just oh. like to plug out is also what something I learned about theater um, and learned to appreciate in theater. Um, in our space is that what Dan created here, he's, he, he taught me a lesson. He says, as I'm trying to figure out where the stage area is and where the people are. Mm-hmm. And Dan had to explain to me, this is Eastline, Dad. What, I'm, what we're building here is it's all the space. Mm-hmm. Even the lobby is mm-hmm. the space, A, by necessity. It's mm-hmm. a small space. Right. But it's also, turns out for Dan, it became a part of his art, part of his mm-hmm. direction is that we're all part of this. Right. And that's not a statement he's trying to make. We're either the big, we're all part of this, mm-hmm. or certainly in the East Line space is the sense I get. When you're an, uh, an audience member, I mean, we're a small, narrow, you've been in the theater, mm-hmm. storefront with about 40 seats. It's like watching a show in your living room. Yes. And we need to, u- and that's actors, Dan needs to sometimes use the audience, what used to be the audience space as mm-hmm. part of the show and part right. of the theater. And so going back to has has have things happened? Mm-hmm. There have been times where the actor, in the course of his blocking or her mm-hmm. blocking, uh, had to say, "Excuse me," you know, or just oh. kind of m- moving along and then sit without dropping a beat, or right. because they bumped into somebody in the room and just kind of kept going with it. Our regulars really come for that, and also a lot of our actors mm-hmm. seek that out because it's a completely different kind of experience. It's it's literally immersive. It's not you know, kind of immersive. Right. It is immersive by necessity, but also now with Dan, by design. Yes. And I really have come to appreciate and, it. And just so everyone knows, where can they find information about East Line well, Theater? You can, f- you can like us on Facebook like for East Line Facebook, Theater or East on Theater. Insta- uh, Instagram or Snapchat with East Line Theater, okay. um, as well as uh, Twitter. So that's mainly most of our things. We also have a website, eastlineproductions.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also have... Uh, 
uh, an email, you can email us at eastlinetheater at gmail.com. You know, that's okay. me. You know. Yeah, eastlinetheater at gmail.com. But I, by the way, it, it, that's T H E A T. Yeah, it's spelled the English R-E, way. The yes, English, English way. English way. Yes, I, I always remember that's that. Because we're because obviously not pretentious enough. We're that special. Enough. We're that special. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And pretentious. So, yeah, we're at 2123 Wantor Avenue in Wantor. Just past the Tiki Bar. Just past the Tiki <laughs> Bar. Can't miss it. So <laughs> go to the Tiki Bar. Which and is just keep, keep walking. Keep walking a few more feet. First Tiki Bar to the right and straight on to the You want to just be quick? Do we want to mention anything? Oh, yeah. Well, right now we have a show running. Yes, what is running Right now it's a show called Columbinus, which is a it's an examination of the Columbine shootings. Oh. Through three different scopes. That's uh, heavy. It, it's heavy. Well, that's the kind of work we that's do. That's heavy. Yeah. Um, uh, it's a very powerful piece. Uh, mm-hmm. The director, her name's Alex Black, has done absolute wonders with the mm-hmm. work. Uh, the cast is really, really, really working hard. Um, it, it, it's 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 a docu theater project, and it's very much about you know the activism behind it. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it's running for three weekends. Uh, opens next weekend, and uh, we hope you all will come down. Yes, I'm going to try and get get there. Yeah, yeah it's, it's I, I'm always saying I've, I've got to. Oh, but it's a okay. good one. It's a good one. It's it's a good cry. Well, I'll make sure that I'm wearing my waterproof mascara. Oh, you don't case. always. Well, you know, girl has to keep some secrets. I'd, Fair I'd enough. love to just jump in real quick. And yes, because I, I know we're running out of time. Uh, this Saturday afternoon. Yes. Right. Yes. One o'clock. We have a matinee. It's a family show. Sleepy Hollow, The Legend Sleepy of Sleepy but it's the not the Hall. story you think it is. Daniel, it's, it's an it's an adaptation of it, written by the right. same people who brought you Prospero Live. So it's another fun little. Hour long family theater uh, yeah. musical. Uh, we're really proud of original it. Work, that original work, like original music, original work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so come on out this Saturday. So come on down this Saturday. Saturday. Yes. yes. All right. Well, I want to thank you both so much for being on the thank show. Thank you for with having me us. Today. Yeah, thank you for having you us. You know, I, I, I love both of you guys so much. And, you know, I'm, I'm always there to support Eastline Theater when, whenever you need me. Well, we love you oh, too, Tony. We love oh, you too, Tony. You. you have been thank a big you. supporter, and thank you so I, much. I have been, and I will continue to be. Yeah. Thank you. So I want to thank everyone who's listening for tuning in to Talking Tony. And we're going to be signing off, so I will be talking to all of you in two weeks. And that's always on Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. So until two weeks from today... Good night, and since it is Halloween, Mm -hmm. have a happy Halloween, everyone. (laughs) Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Ooh. (laughs) Ooh. (laughs) Twilly dilly dee. Twilly dilly dee. Twilly dilly dee. Twilly dilly dee. Tweet, tweet. Tweet, tweet. She talks to the people all night long, chatting and a-gabbing and a-singing her song. All the divas down on Rainbow Street. Love to hear Tony go tweet, 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 talking Tony. Tweet, tweet, talk, talk, tweet. talking Tony. Tweet, 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 tweet,